This is part two of my video on repairing a uh, broken or uh, uncoupled main shaft on a Hammond tone wheel organ. This particular tone wheel generator comes out of a B3, but they're pretty much the same. Uh, tone wheel generators are very similar, at least in principle. Um, in this particular one, if you watch the previous video, I'm pointing at it right now. I'll try to show you what I'm pointing at. The, uh, this item right here, which joins the section, sections of the main shaft together, that's where the start motor is, uh, an ear or a pin had broken and had fallen out and had uncoupled the shaft. You can see another one there, and you know, the different, um, different sections. Uncoupled the shaft and then ended up having, you know, misaligned. Well, obviously the last few uh, bins of tone wheels wouldn't work and it also caused uh, other issues. Um, this is the broken piece here. You can see where the ear on the right hand side broke off. Um, I have managed to put a replacement in, a replacement from a um, considerate person who had taken apart an organ and had a spare part left over, so he sent me the piece. I honestly didn't think I would be able to do it. I, I was, it was kind of a Hail Mary. But just uh, quickly, I, I, it took many hours, that's why I'm not giving you the video to show you all the steps because it would be very long and frustrating. Um, lots of trial and error um, using tools like these. You'll need these lots of long needle nose pliers. Uh, this little item was very handy for um, trying to fish the thing out after I dropped it five or six or seven times. Um, but the method that I use to fix this is that there is some play in the shaft at the end here. Um, there's actually a, this is a, a tensioner that holds this bearing in. So I loosened off the tension. I did through, found this out through trial and error, trust me. Loosened the tension, was able to push the shaft in to give it, you know, to kind of make the shaft loose um, inside. I couldn't get it out. I mean, it's obviously trapped within this, within this chassis, but I could make it very loose. And uh, once it was loosened, I was able to, again, with lots of trial and error, to get my, uh, using the needle nose pliers and uh, little vice grips and all sorts of different things, to try to, you know, kind of maneuver this piece in through this hole. That was the hardest part, was getting it to go through that hole and, and be in the position the, or the orientation that I needed it to be in. But the way that I eventually figured out to make it work, there's a lot of frustration, is that in the gear here, there are four holes. There are two small holes that are intended to fit the teeth, um, the, you know, the, the little pins here, two small holes, but there are also two larger holes in each, um, in each gear. Uh, they just look like they're perhaps to save weight or to balance it or whatever, but they're two larger holes. So through a lot of trial and error, I was able to orient the, uh, this paddle piece, this brass piece, um, orient the, the wheels the correct way, get it sitting. I actually had my wife helping to hold the other side of the, of the paddle piece with a needle nose. We got it very steady. We were able to put the pins into the large holes, which was a lot easier than getting the small holes push the paddle um, you know, all the way to as far as we could go to, to, to one end to get enough clearance to put it into the holes at the other end. Then I was able you know, by finger to orient this um, gear here uh, up with the small holes and uh, then push it into the small holes on this side, push it as far as it would go, reoriented the, uh, this one to its small holes and then finally got all the pins into the small holes. It uh, sounds easy now. It, it took many hours, um, and I used this to be able to see. Without that, I could never have done it. Um, I was, you know, to see the holes, it's so deep in there. So something like that was necessary. Uh, several types of needle nose and, and things were necessary, and, you know, three to four hours of patience and an extra hand, and, and it's done. And uh, then I did a little bit of fiddling to kind of get the, uh, the shaft and make sure all the bearings were... Um, it, you know, as good as I could get them. There's one bearing that uh, had been popped out. I've popped it back in. I hope that that doesn't cause me long-term problems. But uh, now the whole shaft, I don't know if you can see it, but the whole shaft is spinning. And uh, soon I'm going to uh, hook up the start motor and see if uh, see if it runs properly. I sure hope it does after all this trouble. And, uh, and you know, if it's all good, get it back into the organ. It's just sitting right now on the bench, as you can see. 
you know, in and out is no fun, as anyone that's done that before knows, but there was no way of doing this, obviously, without having it completely out of the organ and, and being able to, you know, manipulate it and get all around it. So hopefully I'll save someone. I, I doubt this happens very much. I'm sure this will be a, be a video that's uh, watched by five people in 10 years. But if this does happen to you, I hope I've saved someone a lot of time. Thanks.